just give in. Relax those mental barriers. They're impressive, to be sure. But if you don't lower them, then they'll eventually crumble. I'd rather not damage you any more than I have to. You've felt this before. Me, probing your mind with my magic. Do you remember that? The day that rogue friend of yours snuck a cursed gem off the armor of one of my generals after you defeated her? <laughs> I was rather proud of that plan. He'd been snitching little bits and bobs wherever he could throughout your journey, claiming that it wasn't really theft because it all belonged to me. Hmm. <laughs> your entire party was like that, you know. You included. It's not property damage if it's the Demon King's property. It's not murder if it's one of the Demon King's minions. Anyway, I must say it was quite a stroke of genius on my part to plant a cursed gem for your sticky-fingered friend to take. It was child's play to use the power of that gem to allow me to reach your mind. You remember that night, don't you? You felt my presence in your mind. It took little time at all for your comrades to discover the gem's secret and destroy it, and yet I made quite an impact on you, didn't I? You were barely fit for battle for days afterwards. And this time, I can wield my full power against you, and nobody is going to stop me. Why even bother to resist? It's only a matter of time. The only question is how broken you'll be by the end. Still so self-sacrificing. Well, you're sadly wrong. You'll be able to serve me efficiently even if I have to shatter you. Letting me destroy your mind doesn't stop me from using you. But despite your many frustrating qualities, I want you. Not an empty shell with your powers. Now, obey me. Follow my command. Ugh. Perhaps we need to try something you're not so opposed to. How about revenge? You're not willing to give yourself over to me completely? That's fine. We can work on that later. Just allow me to help you get your revenge on those cruel, backstabbing royals that let you fade into anonymity. They're hopelessly corrupt, you know that. You'd be doing the world a favor by taking them out. Just let me help you. Hmm. <laughs> you really don't seek revenge, do you? Hopefully I can help you with that someday. That naivety is just pathetic. Hmm. How do I get through to you? Huh. <laughs> I know just what to do. Accept my hand in marriage. I'm positive you've considered it. No matter what you claim, there's not a single mortal alive who wouldn't be interested in me, let alone someone who's experienced my charms firsthand. Ugh. Still? A person can only take so much rejection before they start to take it personally, you know. Never in my life have I met someone so completely unable to come to terms with their own desires. You're no better than any other mortal. You have hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Which means you also have fears, secret desires, and envious thoughts. All mortals try to hide these facts from others. But you're the only one to my knowledge that has managed to so effectively hide it from themselves. Why do you insist on denying yourself any amount of personal comfort or satisfaction? What's the point? Who is this even for? It certainly can't be for yourself, like you claim. Everything you've done has only served to make yourself miserable. It can't be for your kingdom, surely. Your kingdom used you up and tossed you aside. Neither can it be for your former friends. None of them have stepped up to help you in your time of need. And I wouldn't be shocked if most of them could be convinced to join me with little effort. I've been pondering why you put up such a fantastic, infuriating fight. And I think I have a theory. 
You're doing it for the lie. Yes, the lie that there was a point to your journey. Back then, you must have felt so good about yourself. You were doing something important. You were a hero. Everyone loved you and believed in you. Or at least that's what you believed. Most people would do anything to feel like their actions mattered the way yours did. But you think that if you give in to me now, you will invalidate it all. That your contribution to humanity will be entirely undone. And now that you've lost everything, you think that's all you have left. I hate to tell you. Well, I don't really. But it never mattered. I'm not the villain. I'm just another player on the world stage. It doesn't actually matter who wins or who loses. Your royals painted me as some great evil. Because of course they did. They don't want a rival. You may claim you protected your people. But what about my people? Are demons' lives worth so much less than humans? The underworld has always been harsh and unforgiving. And as our population grew, we had no choice but to expand to greener pastures. Reality wasn't so generous as to provide enough resources for everybody, and so we did what we had to. What, I ask you, what was so righteous about you stopping us? About slaughtering demons by the thousands, just so humans can grow fat and lazy in comfort. It was a lie. It was all a lie. You would have been no less a savior if you had joined me. The only difference is, I know how to treat someone as valuable as you. Even now, as I try to brainwash you to my side. I've treated you better than your homeland has in years. You have plentiful food, warm, comfortable living quarters, servants to care for your needs. It doesn't matter which side you help. And so why not help the side that treats you better? I think that's enough for today. You've never really been that responsive to my speeches or promises. I'll find what motivates you someday. But for now, we should eat. Servants, bring in the table and ready our dinner. Yes, it's much more elaborate than yesterday's dinner, isn't it? I anticipated that you wouldn't have much of an appetite on your first date here, and that you'd be especially hungry today after our first, uh, session. Oh, now you insult me. What reason could you possibly have to distrust this meal? I suppose you think I poisoned it. I have you at my mercy. If I wanted you dead, it would have already happened. This is exactly the kind of thing I've been telling you about. You pick the most pointless things to be stubborn about. I, well, no. That's actually not a bad idea. But I don't feel that I need to lace your food with any mind-altering substances. I think the brainwashing would work better without it, actually. But even if it was, you really don't have much choice, do you? You can eat the food set in front of you. Or starve. Look, I'll even take the first bite. That's better. I would have been especially put out if you refused to eat this special dinner. <laughs> you see, I'd actually had a feast like this prepared for us once before. The day you arrived at my palace. Indeed. It was supposed to be for a celebration. It seems I had been a touch overconfident that you'd accept my marriage proposal, so I had the feast prepared in advance. It never sat right with me, that we never got to eat it together. It seemed appropriate to have an identical one prepared after you were brought here. I... I have a question. I hate to ask anything that makes me seem insecure, but I've been dying to know. Did you refuse me out of principle only? Do you still? Or am I just not desirable to you? That question's always bothered me. I received so many marriage proposals from both demons and mortals 
that I assumed that I was universally sought after. I find it so strange that you never even seemed to consider agreeing when I offered. So intriguing. <laughs> I thought you wanted an answer. Never mind then. It's not important. Just enjoy the meal. I imagine you haven't had an opportunity to eat this well since your victory feast following my defeat. No. There will be no further brainwashing today. I intend to wear you down slowly, rather than break you. You're free to spend the rest of the day as you please. So as long as you don't try to leave, nor bring harm to any of my subjects or my property. That being said, I would enjoy it if you spent it with me. You may consider me an enemy, but I know you far, far better than anyone else. The barrier that separates us might be easily stepped over, if you'd only try. Ah, well, there's plenty of time for that to change. Plenty of time, indeed.